Hello, Professor. Hi, hello. Come right through. You? How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Okay. So, a lot of people are seeing you for the first time and just wondering who you are. So, can you please tell us more about yourself? Yeah, so I'm uh, Professor Chris Jackson. I work at an engineering company called Jacobs. Yes. I, I also am a visiting professor at Imperial College. And I'm a geologist, I'm a geoscientist, so yeah. I'm interested in uh, the structure and evolution of the, the Earth. Oh, that's cool. That must be a lot of work. So may you please tell me how a normal work day looks like for you? No one day is the same. They, they all differ. Some days we'll be sitting at a desk looking at data on the screen and yeah. um, trying to understand what's beneath our feet and how we can use the geology beneath the feet and around us to provide energy and water. Yeah. Then other days we'll be out in the field, we'll be looking at uh, rock samples in the lab as well. So, so a lot of variety. I understand. So did you always know that you wanted to be a geoscientist? No, I'm still not sure now, but I, yeah, it's just one of those things which I happen to enjoy and be yeah. good at. And I think it's a combination of those two things that I think are really important to try and find a career. So it was, it was never, I never collected dinosaurs or rocks when I was little or any of those sort of stories you may have heard of before. I just yeah. kind of fell into geology, but I really do enjoy it. Okay, so in three words, can you describe what is being like being a geoscientist and a science communicator? Uh, it's magical being able to look back in time and understand what's deep beneath our feet. It's yes. uh, challenging because those are difficult questions to answer. Yeah. And it's important as well because understanding the structure and evolution of the earth and how we can use that knowledge to protect people's lives and provide resources is really, really critical. Yeah, I do agree that it's really important. So why is being able to communicate science so important? Because science is all around us, it affects people's lives daily, it influences where we go, it, it controls our, our health and well-being, yeah. yet it's not something that a lot of people have an awareness of. So it's odd, isn't it, that it's very, very important, it's around us all the time, it influences what we do, but not many people know much about it. Yeah. Therefore, it's important to try and improve the general public's understanding of science, their science literacy is a term that's often used so that they have a deeper understanding of the, the way these things are impacting their lives. And they can make informed choices about them as well. So true, that's why science true. communication is as, is as important as the science. I understand. So do you have any tips for those who want to improve their science communication skills? It's just one of these things you just have to kind of dive in and get involved. I think there are some practical things you can learn about um, how to simplify something which is very complicated yes. to make it understandable. I think there's some ways about making visuals which are understandable. Mm -hmm. So I think there are some very practical things, but apart from that, there's no one book you can read that says, you know, start here, you end here, you'll be able to communicate science. It's yeah. just continuous refinement of the process, but practice, I would say. Practice on your friends at the dinner table or your yeah. family at the dinner table when you go to the cafe with your friends, talk to them about science. And through that, you will actually start to educate them about um, how, how important science is and, and how it's impacting them. Okay, so a total shift from geoscience and coming here to LOISF. What has been your favourite part of being a part of LOISF so far? It's just seeing the amount of countries and the people involved. I think it's really, and you know, science is a global endeavour. Yeah. Everybody around the world is doing science. Science impacts people around the world. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important that people around the world have access to scientific knowledge and, mm -hmm. and, and get a chance to be inspired by scientists who, are, who look different to them and sound different to them because the power of science is going to come from collaborative working. So actually having isolated mm -hmm. things, having things like this isolated wouldn't be as powerful. Okay, so now that LOICF is now 64 years older, would you think that you would have wanted to attend something like this when you were younger? You know what, I, I, I probably wouldn't. Oh. Because when I was little growing up, I wasn't particularly a scientifically interested student. Yeah. I was into sports. <laughs> I just played football three times a week and athletics and I... And so this is just, I think this is an important message that you're not born a scientist. Mm -hmm. You know, I might not have come to LY, you know, LYISF myself, but you don't need to, you know, science can kind of come to you like later in life and you can become a scientist. But yeah. I, I still think things like this are really important for those students who at this moment in time are really science interested. This is a great place to come to. I agree, it is a great place. I'm so sad that this is the last question, <laughs> but I really enjoyed my conversation with you. And to close it up, I would want to know, what advice do you have for young people like myself who are wanting to pursue a future in STEM? I think 
You just need to stay curious, keep your mind open, think about um, questions you'd like to answer. Yeah. And that was very much for me. It wasn't that I was interested in math, science, you know, math, physics, chemistry, or biology, or anything particularly. What I was interested in was landscapes okay. and how they formed and how they evolved. And in there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of STEM uh, disciplines are in there. Yes. So I think find that inspiration first rather than thinking, I need to be good at these these subjects, which can be quite abstract if somebody doesn't give you or you don't find yourself a reason to understand them. Thank you very much. I've taken notes. Thank, <laughs> Thank you so you much for your time. Thank you, Linda. Sure.